Art has seemed so normal to me that it is only well into my 30s that I've stopped to ask, how on earth is this even possible? How do they dig a big tunnel through the bay mud so well that my only problem with riding through it is how loud it is? The answer, like so many other things in life, was that it was done in pieces. Specifically, it's a ride on BART that is a whole lot different than what you're probably used to. A Bay Area filmmaker is offering viewers a unique perspective on the transit system with his newly released documentary called Tunnel Vision, an unauthorized BART ride. With a secretly attached camera on a train, the film offers an unfiltered view of a typical train ride. It sheds more light on how BART and its employees help to keep the Bay Area moving. Tunnel Vision premiered at the Roxy Theater in San Francisco, and it is now streaming online. And for more, we are joined by the filmmaker, Vincent Wu. Thank you so much, Vincent, for being here. As we mentioned, this was unauthorized. So what made it motivated you uh, to make this film? And then also, how were you able to get that camera attached <laughs> to the car? The big question. Well, yeah. To your first question, I think personally, I just really wanted to see it myself. And kind of the only way to see from the front of the train is actually to either get a job as a train operator or secretly attach a camera to the front of BART. And since I had already basically attached the camera, I figured why not also make a movie? Because I figured other people would want to see it too. And that kind of, I got lost in a one thing led to another chain of events. <laughs> there you go. And obviously BART is uh, weighing in here. I, I uh, talked briefly earlier today with Alicia Tro. She's a spokesperson for BART. And, oh, wow. And uh, she, she told me, uh, you know, in regards to the film, that uh, obviously they embrace transit fans like yourself and people who want to celebrate the BART system. However, they do say it, it is not safe to attach a, t a camera to BART trains, and they have some security concerns about some of the vulnerable infrastructure that might have been shown in the film. But, but they're taking a hands-off approach here. They're not... Uh, you you know, coming after you or anything like that. Oh, for, that's in, really great to find out. I uh, had no idea whether oh, I'd be arrested You're, you're or just not. learning that? Yeah, right yeah, now? this is news to me. You? I invited Alicia to the premiere, but I didn't get a response. I was really mm -hmm. hoping she'd come. <laughs> yeah, well, so I, that's what I was hoping. I mean, what, what you, you were obviously hoping to get Bart's attention here. What, what was, was that part of, part of the goal with, with producing not, this not film? really. I mean, I just thought they'd enjoy it. Yeah. Like, straightforwardly. I thought it was unlikely that I would actually get in trouble. Otherwise, <laughs> I wouldn't have done it. But I also understand that there's like some things that BART can't say itself, especially to answer its critics. And like, it can be useful to have some sort of, uh, like a guy outside of BART who's willing to do and say certain things that like the agency itself couldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Vincent, what is, what is the end game here? I mean, you mentioned that you were <laughs> sort of driven by curiosity, which I can respect, but are you also hoping for, I, I don't know, changes from BART? Do you want them to do things differently or do you want passengers to see and do things differently? Yeah, I mean, if anything, like the movie isn't directed at BART the agency so much as it's directed at the citizens of the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the movie is dedicated to just, you know, stepping back and recalling how important BART is as critical infrastructure of the Bay Area, how difficult it would be, like, be to build it today if we had to build it, like, afresh, and to remind us, like, I don't know, like, how beautiful and important the whole system is, basically. Yeah. I mean, the whole film is, is 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 an homage to Bart here, but but you also tackle you know one one of the, the you know the the issues that the system is facing right now as we emerge from the pandemic, and we we've obviously talked yeah. a lot on this show about the fact that that Bart and other transit systems are are facing this fiscal cliff here. They're, they're, they've lost a lot of riders here over the course of the pandemic, uh, and you 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 tackle those issues in the film as well. What what are your hopes for for how Bart? bounces back following the pandemic. What is, I, what is your vision for BART in the future? Scott Wiener talks about this a bit in my movie, and he makes the point, which I totally agree with, that BART is unusually dependent on fare revenue. It's not as directly subsidized by the tax base as a lot of other agencies, both like in the Bay Area and around the nation are. So I think we need to commit as a region to like basically stably funding BART through simple tax revenue, which we've so far been sort of unwilling to do. Like Wiener is attempting to fund the latest gap in BART's shortfall through a bridge toll, which is a temporary measure. Like longer term, we, ne we need to figure out how do we actually fund this thing? How do we fund it so it expands its service outside of just peak commute hours? And you know, how do we just get as many people riding as we can? Because it's a public benefit, it's not a business.
Vincent Wu, really appreciate it. As we mentioned, you do provide people with a completely new perspective of what it's like to be on BART. Appreciate your time. Thanks again for coming in. Thank you.